Now, the 10 minute drill. This is a big one. Brought to you by tireoutlet.com. Wholesale prices, premium service. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. All right, let's get it back going. Sports concepts and rationalizations. <laughs> Coming your way. Uh, you all right, Dan? Yeah, I am. I'm choked up at the end of the year. I'm taking heed and stock of my 2018, and it was not good. Uh, Beef, what are we giving away at the end of this segment? Yeah, stay tuned, guys. For the end of the segment, you'll have a chance to win a uh, free entree courtesy of Sonny's Barbecue and a $20 gift card to Zips Express Car Wash with seven area locations to serve you, including Orange Park. All right, uh, Dan, I'll, I'll get us started All here. Right, let's uh, do it. The Jags made very few statements on the field this year. I guess you could say they made one at home against the New England Patriots. It was obviously the Super Bowl. It just came in week two. It was. But I, I thought two very emphatic statements immediately following the season yesterday. So which one of the two were more – either surprising slash emphatic to you, okay? First, that was Shot Khan, and I won't read the whole thing. Right. But he says, given our overall body work the past two seasons, I offered to Tom Coughlin I preferred entering 2019 with as much stability as reasonable or possible at the top of our football operation. Those decisions at all times are Tom's. I would respect any call he made it on our general manager and head coach, and I'm pleased that he sees our situation and opportunity similarly, and so everyone's back. Okay. Or... Leonard Fournette and T.J. Yeldon are an embarrassed. I'm going to paraphrase this one: are an embarrassment to professional football. Their behavior was selfish and yeah. and immature. Uh, more surprising was the uh, latter because uh, we were under the impression that Coughlin was staying, uh, that Marone was staying, and if anyone was going to be a fall guy, it would have been it would have been Caldwell. And in the end, it wasn't him. And there's a few reasons why. Number one, listen, if Tom Coughlin and Doug Marone are staying, and there's an edict here, we better be competitive and win football games again next year. And, you know, so if you're, if you're a, a GM, are you going to take that opportunity? Uh, you, you know, you'd think, think long and hard. About it. it ain't your show, in other words, okay? You're going to be dealing with a bunch of other dudes. So, um, so I wasn't blown away by that. I still think there'll be a lot of changes, by the way. There's some talk about, you know, doing some work in the personnel, changes on the personnel side, et cetera. So all those things still to come. With that said, I guess, uh, 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 yeah, I guess Coughlin had had enough, and it's clear to me the Jaguars are positioning themselves for a divorce from Leonard Fournette if they want. I think the Jags have taken and, 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 and d- dealt with Leonard for two years off the field and a lot of the antics, and they've never said anything. You Publicly. know, we, we've heard the whispers. We've heard some talk. We've heard some concern and I think finally it, it, it reached a boil over point. And if you know Tom Coughlin and you hear Tom Coughlin, you know something like that uh, uh, was annoying to him. And, it, and it's, it's a shame it happened, but it is what it is. And now you'll decide uh, what you want to do going forward with uh, Leonard Fournette. And, I, again, I, I'm not sure I'd get rid of him. I, I think I might give him one more year. I'm not saying I wouldn't address the running back position, but – uh, I'm not 100%. I just cut them and, you know, get rid of them and move on. I'm not cutting him. Yeah. No, but I'm hoping that this will be one, but he's on a very short leash. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but I'm with you. No, I, I don't cut I him. Think, a, does, that doesn't, now that doesn't ease, listen, Jeff, that when doesn't a guy ease the takes disappointment pic, that I, I have. When a guy takes off-season pictures with stacks of money and private jets behind him, uh, you kind of get the idea of what's important to him. Cash. So you're trying to hit him where it hurts, I guess. Fair hey, enough. Hey, so, so, so we'll see. Hey, uh, we've talked about this, and we'll continue to talk about it. We know Blake Bortles' time is over here in Jacksonville, FLA. I mean, you know, if you watched the broadcast yesterday, uh, Andrew Catalan had some interesting stats, and, you know, well, uh, 89 block pass, knockdown passes, more than 100. A couple more yesterday. More than, yeah, more than 100 turnovers. Another His final pass as a jag probably uh, was a pick. Uh, but my, my better be, <laughs> but the, 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 the question is going forward again, to me, the only veteran out there who everybody would get excited about and who you would hand the keys over to and say, okay, go win us a Super Bowl would be Nick Foles. Uh, in terms of veterans, do you agree with that? Or are there other ones that you might bring in? In other words, if you bring in Nick Foles, I don't think you necessarily have to with the seven pick. Take a quarterback. Well, with Justin Herbert out of the draft, and what if Dwayne Haskins doesn't come in? There's not a quarterback ranked as high as number seven. It would be a Gabbert Bortles mistake to do that. So, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, the Jacks have this situation where they're still kind of in a window where they're going to age defensively here with Calais Campbell and some other people should they stick around. Um, before I answer the question, let me ask you this. Do you think, honestly, is Blake Bortles starting anywhere for the rest of his career? 
Oh no, no, no. So that this it, if the, if there is any ambiguity at all of whether Blake Bortles is going to be back here next year, I quit. I do. I give. If they bring him back, I don't care if he agrees to come back for one point two million. Yeah. Enough. Oh yeah. All right. Um. Well, I'm with you on Nick Foles. I do. I'm a little afraid of Nick Foles because the that's, one. I mean, that's fair. The, we, as a starter, he's not been very good. Right. As the replacement starter, he has been very good. There's one. There's one out there that is intriguing me more than it did before. Mm-hmm. But it's going to have to take a massive salary restructure. You're going to have to get help from the team that trades you. But Matthew Stafford is a guy that I wouldn't mind getting the opportunity on a team with some defense. Mm-hmm. Come back to the South. But you have to trade for him. I, I, yes, you, you do. You have to give something up. Uh, yes, you have you to do. give up a lot. Probably not a first rounder, though. No? I doubt it. I know because they're going to get all that salary relief now. Yeah. I, you yeah. know, they can draft who they want with yeah. their quarterback. But now look, the other side of that is what are the Lions? It'd be one thing if the Lions had Lamar Jackson on the bench, or I'm just trying to think right. of some young guy that right. could, could step in for him. But I'm not all gung ho on, on Joe Flacco or Teddy Bridgewater or some of these others, to your point. Of just the strict veteran free agents, yeah, Nick Foles is who I would feel mo- most comfortable with. But I would still be a little nervous about not addressing quarterback even if I draft Foles. Mm -hmm. So I would say it that way. Here's an NFL question for you. Last year, speaking of Foles, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, yeah, they were a a, a two seed in the postseason. By the way, if Foles leads them to the Super Bowl as a six seed, he has to be the starter in Philadelphia, and then we get Carson Wentz. Well, but continue. Back now, to, Dan back. Hicken's scenario two weeks ago. Thank you very much. Speaking of the Stafford thing, we talked about this. <laughs> yes. There's a, a thing with his contract. If he's cut or traded, right. Dead the money. remaining bonus money is yeah. accelerated immediately. Yeah. It's a $30 million cap hit for the yes. Lions. That's why everybody thinks they won't move Stafford. Correct. Yeah, Which, Correct. yeah and we've heard that, right? I was aware of that. Like I said, it would have to take some sort of yes. collaborative effort um, between the two. Maybe you trade him for Bortles, and they agree to pick up some of his, and you're paying the extra 14 for one year. I mean, something that certainly should be explored, something along those lines. Okay, back to last year's Eagles. Yeah, they were one of the top two seeds in in the NFC, but they were uh, by no means a favorite to reach the Super Bowl. No. They were 16-1. to They were deep down the list. Yes. So, Dan, I'm going to take away your top five favorites, the Saints, the Chiefs, the Rams, the Patriots, and the Bears. Oh. And I want you to tell me which of the following, Colts, Eagles, Chargers, Ravens, Texans, Cowboys, Seahawks, Uh would you be comfortable saying, yeah, they'll win the Super Bowl? Uh, I'll go with. The Chargers, even though they're even though fading they're going fast. Well, I'm not sold that they're fading okay. fast, and I they lost a, a game against Baltimore, uh, in at home. I think they're going to go to Baltimore and beat the Ravens this 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 week. I really do. So, uh, I, I has think, Lamar Jackson grown on you at all yet in the last couple of weeks? I know you weren't even with the wins. You weren't real. He's played better. Yeah, he made yesterday not as much better throws though against the Chargers. He threw some good balls against the Chargers. He's not scared of the situation, so I like that. Um, I, I got no problem with them riding with him. I just know that ultimately he will be the starter next year. We'll oh, find yeah. out. Yeah, we'll, yeah, find, we'll out. find out. We'll find out. So uh, so but, cheap when they got him. Ooh, that's that's yeah. a, that'll be a hard one. Yeah, I'll go with the. Uh, but I'm going. I'm, I'm riding with the Chargers. The Chargers of all those. It's it's a tough one to pick, and you can make arguments. You know, I think the Colts are going to beat the Texans. I, 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 by I'm the way, you, the Colts are, are a curious one to me. And you know who's got the longest odds of all the Eagles at plus three thousand? Why? I wouldn't write them off. Why? Why yeah. are there? Why are the, the odds it's so hard. long? It's so hard to repeat. They and... can play anyone though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Seahawks are another one that can be s- s- sketchy. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could lose to anybody, but they can beat anybody. But, it's going to be fun postseason. But does anybody doubt? And I look. I know Saints, Chiefs. No, New Patriots, England, New England. Yeah. There they are at the two seed. Yeah. Oh, you think New England's scared of going into Kansas of City not. if they had to? No. And by the way, are you sure Kansas City's going to win that playoff game, the first one? Because they get the bye. So that means that means Mahomes' first game you know, is a big one. It's been, there, was a, there was a major, major development three or four weeks ago that seemingly has been forgotten. And the Chiefs aren't the Chiefs without Kareem Hunt. Correct. That's a huge, huge weapon that you're losing. Correct. So anyway, uh, 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 we shall see. How that uh, how that all works out? All right, uh, let's let's go back to the uh, to the Jaguars. If for, take quarterback out of the equation and give me one, I, I'm going to give you, I'm going to grant you a wish, Jeff Prosser. Uh, I am I'm Dan the Genie Hicken. I'm oh. going to grant you one wish for 2019 in terms of a player. Tell me the player that you want, not the person, the the position. Okay, that I'm going to grant you a wish. Like if you say to me, I want a tight end. 
I'm going to give you a great tight end. You're giving me a great player. A great whatever. player at what position? What do you want? And I can't say quarterback, obviously. Can't say quarterback. Yeah. I've taken him out of the equation. Yeah. I am only. I can only go so far as a genie. <laughs> I, I've done this for 24 years. I can't do it ever. I can't. Wow. You know what? This is going to sound like kind of In the of genie a, world, uh, we're not allowed to give out quarterbacks. Well, it's a quick answer. If I had a long time to really study things. Yes. I do think one thing that's not going to change, it's in the DNA of Tom Coughlin and Doug Marone, how they want to play football. Uh-huh. I mean, if you would give me Saquon Barkley right now, I think I would take him over okay. Zach Ertz. All right. I think I want a great running back. A great running back. A great, not a, not a, okay. ooh, better than what we've had. Right. Great, right. he got right. a thousand yards. A great one. A great one. Yeah. I think that would behoove this Ezekiel team. Elliott, Todd Gurley. Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley. Any of the other top ten picks in the last four years besides Leonard. Correct. Christian McCaffrey. Christian That'd McCaffrey. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be another one for sure. I got Fair one. Enough. I got one college football question. I know we're going to talk Fire a lot away. of Gators. Yes, we are. Uh, segment among themselves a little bit later to, to kind of sum up their season and the game that you were at over the weekend. Yes. But – what do you make of I, – I can't describe it in any other words in a colossal mess in Miami. Can't be good what happened yesterday. Uh, well, real quick, just so folks know, Mark Rick retired. You probably heard that. They've already hired his replacement. It's Manny Diaz, who is at the U as a defensive coordinator, took the Temple job. Miami's got to pay Temple $4 million. Temple has now pocketed $6.5 million from the Collins departure and the Diaz departure. Manny Diaz was on the phone yesterday hiring an offensive coordinator when he got word that Rick was retiring. And a lot of people thought Cristobal was going to come back. Uh, uh, but he has a $10 million I buyout. I wouldn't leave Oregon for Miami, first of all. I was curious about the type of coach that Miami can now pull. Uh, uh, for them to get Manny Diaz, I, That remain, he's never been a head Doesn't coach. Doesn't scare you at all. I uh, know. So, listen, he's well-respected. and he'll, uh, Can Miami still win? I but, mean, if Mark Rick went down and got off to a hot start and yeah. then fizzled, who, who is going to win? It's a tough deal down there, man. And, listen, with Florida on the, swing, on the back uh, swinging upwards, uh, uh, Miami's got a, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle for them. It'll be very interesting to see what happens, but Manny Diaz, he may be a home run hire. He is from my, if I was Manny Diaz, I'd close down South Florida borders again and try to go that route and see if we can recruit that way and see if we can just keep all the kids home and let them play for the U. But it, it is going to be a, it's going to be a challenge. We won't hear from Joe U. He's on his honeymoon. Do you, is, does you, so do he's you, in do, Paris. Do you, do you <laughs> criticize Mark Richt in any way for just giving I up? I think Mark Richt, I mean, you made I a think commitment. Mark Richt, what I think happened is Mark Richt retired because he wasn't going to fire his assistant coaches, including his own son. So I think rather than take that route from Will what I – Will he coach again? Um, Mark Rick maybe is not. not. He's 58. Maybe not. I'm not sure he will coach again. He maybe he's had enough. He's had a wonderful career. He's a really great man. It's, 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 I mean, you know he's it's a really super Mark Rick guy. has a ton of friends and not a lot of fans, somebody wrote. And I thought, yeah, that's kind of – that kind of describes Mark Rick. So, yeah. uh, But he is a good man, and, and you wish him nothing but the best. Um, and he got off to a hot start at Miami, but he couldn't sustain. And maybe he lost his fire. Maybe that's part of it. Uh, but in the end, uh, he decides, all right, I'm done. I'm out. Uh, hasta luego, which is what we're going to do right now with caller number three. Caller number three. Let's go. We're going to give you three, a Dan. prize pack at 641-1010 beef. Tell them what they got and take us to break. Uh, Danny, call number three at 641-1010 is going to take home a free entree courtesy of Sunny's Barbecue plus a $25 gift card from Zips Express Car Wash with seven area locations to serve you, including... Orange Park, call number three, 641-1010.